in the meantime, um, since we're going to be discussing this at a technical level, apparently, um, and you have volunteered your credentials, um, what are your credentials, Dr. Professor? I have a degree from Ohio State University in Cleveland. In? And that degree is specifically a master's in psychology. No early childhood development or? That is part of psychology, a master's, yes. Okay, so why do you disagree with, say, the likes of Harvard on early childhood sexual education? It would be more accurate to say that I disagree with individuals at Harvard because Harvard does not so much sanction entire studies. What they do is they allow people who have been educated there to conduct studies as a Harvard graduate. Okay, so what is your disagreement? When it comes to early childhood development and sexual identity, I don't believe there is enough brain development to count as male or female in a definitive sense, and especially in any transgender sense. But that's not what we're talking about. A transsexual, tra di different sexual identities do not matter at a young age because they haven't even gone through puberty yet. Yeah, but we're not talking about their sexual identities. We're talking about a, socio uh, a sociological construct having to do with the greater structure of society, parental and familial units. Okay, well, what do you think that uh, you should teach kids of that age? That people sometimes have two mommies and two daddies. Sometimes they have parents that don't necessarily fit to uh, the traditional mommy or daddy role, and that not every human being looks like a mommy or daddy or feels like they are a mommy or daddy. Okay, so that I would actually ha not have a problem with. If, if you are teaching children that sometimes parents are male, male, female, female, and not necessarily male, female, that is one thing. Well, However, that's how literally it what we were be, talking about. What? Well, that's what we were literally talking about. And you immediately identified it as teaching them about uh, gay sex. No, 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 that, that's not what I was saying. Okay, so that is a, a misunderstanding then. I said sex and sexual identity, which means to identify people as gay or you put sex not gay slash and sexual what identity. that means for a person. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm saying give them instructions to do anything either way. That's not even what straight, you know, Christian uh, schools do. No, they don't do that. They don't be like, okay, this is how you have sex with a woman. Well, they don't teach no. sexual education in any significant fashion. They teach abstinence-only programs. They, 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 do, they do that, and that is actually wrong. They shouldn't teach it abstinence-only, but they should not emphasize it. it. But then again, in the era of uh, Instagram and TikTok and Twitch, well, it doesn't really matter if they were or not to, in my opinion. What do you talk, what do you, how do you feel about real world uh, examples such as the uh, Dutch program where they start teaching uh, children about sex and their bodies starting at age four? I don't think that would make sense to them, honestly, because I remember being four. I remember being five in particular, my first day of uh, kindergarten. And uh, I had some idea of my sexual identity uh, but that's either that year or the next. You're the a point is, you're a scientist. I'm I'm anecdotal, right? You're a scientist. We have 30 years of data comparing two different sexual education styles via the Dutch versus ours, and the results are worlds apart. And distinct one is distinctly more palatable and preferable than the other. Well, well, sex is primarily everything to do with impulse because that is impulsive, it's instinctive. And that is something that you do want to delay, at least to some degree, when it comes to young children because they don't understand the repercussions of it. 
You understand? Well, but the best way to undo or potentially delay those negative repercussions that you're discussing is education. The more you know about the topic, the, the more of a broad understanding you have about something, the more likely it is that you can make an educated decision on that. And the Dutch program outperforms most countries on a global metric scale for sexual health outcomes. And I have, yes. what, I have the back is, studies to put, uh, to put that worth. Oh, um, ad adolescent pregnancy, birth, abortion, and STI rates. Okay. So what if I were to tell you that it may have something to do with sexual education or it may have something to do with education. Do you understand the difference? Please don't speak down to me. That's not what I meant. Okay. Well, if somebody doesn't understand the difference between a, co a broad concept such as education or sexual education, which is a microcosmic concept, again, you're speaking down to me. So just please don't. Um, All right. Well, then I apologize for the misinterpretation. That's not what I intended. But the fact that, okay, so they have a better educational system across the bar, which, uh, across the bar, which includes a subset that is sexual education. And yet they still outperform most countries. Yes, but and we have it does have everything to do with future life uh, prospects and the context of what happens during sex as an adolescent and the consequences therein, which is actually um, more profound in females than males. So why do the Dutch teen why do uh, Dutch teenagers give uh, pr uh, give birth at five times less than their American counterparts? Well, that would depend on uh, are are they in poverty? You know, there's, there's definitely the areas of the country that are less fortunate than the others, and they are the ones that end up giving. Uh, birth at the teenage level more often. So how about STIs? Okay. What's that? How about STIs? Uh, well, that uh, would actually be at the same rate. So people in the United States under the age of 25 make up half of all new STIs each year, while people in the Netherlands in that same age bracket account for less than 10% of new cases in their country. And the wealth disparity between the populations and the bell curve regarding sexually transmitted diseases and pregnancy, except, is there a difference? Yeah, except we can uh, look at a, a, a state-level microcosmic example in the United States, such as Utah, which has a, uh, a high middle-class income rate in their state, and yet their numbers are through the roof. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. It lagged out there. Except we could look at a more microcosmic example in the United States, such as Utah, which has a higher in, uh, average income rate and a much more established me, uh, median income and a, middle cl uh, a safe middle class in their state, and yet their numbers are through the roof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be Mormon territory. Oh, so, so, edu so education does matter more than the actual money. Yeah. Well, Mormons te te tend to be a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, oppressive when it comes to sexuality and a so lot a country, of like So a country founded upon that. puritanical principles that finds the discussion of sex wholly unpalatable could essentially con yeah. uh, carry that entire tonality to their nation state rather than just a state level. Would it not be possible? Hmm. Actually, that's a very good point. So would it not prove out that when you have a multitude of global meta-analyses and studies that have been done both at the nation state level and the United States individuality, uh, individuated level that have shown time and again that early life sexual education and a comprehensive sexual education that includes such things as homosexuality and transgender and all of these other LGBTQIA plus uh, issues is actually leading to more positive uh, mid and end of life outcomes for society and the individuals probably hold a bunch of hold water. I half agree with that in that 
the way the Mormons teach sex education is like uh, an affirmative uh, oppositional stands when they teach them that basically this is how it works but don't you dare do it because this is why and you're going to hell etc as opposed to other areas which may avoid it but then sex education in some degree is usually taught i mean i was taught in euclid sex education when i was in seventh grade and that was a very very poor city okay so i would have to say that just leaving it alone would make everybody happy Except it's not about making people happy. It's about achieving a positive uh, out, uh, outcome in life for the, your citizenry. It's not about happiness. It's about reducing pregnancy rates. It's about reducing STI rates. It's about abusing, uh, uh, reducing abuse rates. It's about reducing s teenage LGBTQI suicide rates. Transgender suicide rates due to their, uh, the oppressive and coercive nature of our society are through the fucking roof because they don't feel accepted and welcome because we don't teach that in our society, that they are human beings, that they are normal, that they should be accepted. And things like this lead to these anecdotal experiences that myself and but all of age, my brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community. What age would they find out what their gender identity is? When they figure it out. We're not trying right. to inform their gender identity. We're trying to inform them that there are other gender identities. You understand but, the difference, right? Right. There's a difference okay. between propagandizing so a child and in telling your, them. In your definition, what do you think gender is? Gender is a sociological expression of a series of complex, variable biological factors leading into a psychological phenomenon and an expression thereof. Uh, that what? That didn't didn't say what you thought it said. Can you can you put that another way, please? Yes. Gender is a complex topic that is separate from biology and is derived from psychology and underpinnings of biology. Okay. And it is that which expresses what? Now you have me at a loss. What is it? You know, gender is typically defined in psychiatry as an expression of uh, personality disposition and traits that are typical to sex of and sex characteristics. Of course, psychiatry a few years ago considered it a pathology. So forgive me if I sure. don't immediately go to the psychiatric definitional set. Okay, so we could maybe assume that it's non-scientific or... Uh, I prefer to go with of belonging to social aspects more than biological aspects. Okay, so sociology. So the construct in sociology that has to do with the interaction of society and how those traits are presented that are based on the sex characteristics at a biological state typically presented. Sure, let's go with that. So what's wrong with okay. teaching a child that there's more than a binary set of those? There would be a problem because the child has not gone through puberty yet. And so their sexual That's, identity no. and the relevant characteristics that were presented would not yet be present. But that would undermine all sexual education because they haven't gone through puberty. They have no point of reference then. Yes, the point of reference is important to understand that you so are you're arguing for entity. undoing all sexual education when you teach a child sex before the time is and dare i say right that that's not the word i'm looking for uh, then you are going to give them preconceptions about it before it happens and so it can influence how things happen should we for not them. should we not teach children about puberty before they enter puberty puberty yes no 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 because that's the foundation of your argument here is that they have no con contextual reference point because they haven't entered puberty therefore it would confuse them it would be it would be like trying to teach a kid calculus before they have learned algebra in a sense except it's not and you know that it's 
it's a very close analogy and it does have to deal with puberty and how your body changes and things happen as opposed to later on the very complex social interactions that you have as a post-pubescent entity uh, or human to be literal. Do you so, understand? Yeah, I understand. But I'm also conflicted because while I, I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to blow smoke. I'm not going to say I respect your expertise in this matter. The fact of the matter is, is that I'm looking at, you know, a field of studies that disagree with you here up to and including like three decades worth of anecdotal and empirical data at a nation state level that prove you wrong in your assumptions. Because do you have any studies based on this? Like, have you done any field work? I can give you studies. Yes, I would give you love various to see links. To I the would. Papers, yes, if you'd like them. Yes. Would you like in PDF? Uh, we don't care. Put them in the commons or put the links in the uh, Twitch chat. We need we need content here because the fact of the matter is is that. I mean, I can just start dropping links about you know the National Library of Medicine and studies and uh, uh, levels and trends in a national scale and you we can point to like three decades worth of data at a nation state level of the the comparisons and like you are the outlier in this like you are in the vast minority as far as your field goes you know that right that would not be accurate but i do respect your opinion and that well uh, we will we will we're, we will take a minute and let you gather your links and uh, provide those citations because chat has been asking for those mm -hmm. citations for quite some time. So we will, we will, right. we will well, pause. It's going to take me a, a little while because this is a very long bookmark list here. Okay. Well then feel free to put them in in commons and then we will revisit this topic. Um, so like, yeah, like this is, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that, I mean, Teenagers who receive early life sexual education sleep around less. They communicate more often with their partners. They talk about more of their likes and dislikes. They report higher rates of sexual satisfaction. They make up less STI amounts. They have fewer abortions. They have fewer pregnancies. They, ha they have fewer, uh, fewer suicides as a result of uh, the LGBTQIA community has fewer suicides as a, a result of early life sexual education. Okay. So just before I go and compile this, um, do you have a standard of proof that you would accept? Yeah, peer-reviewed uh, peer study. It has to be published in a journal and it has to be peer-reviewed. Okay, so peer-reviewed study could also mean on conservative websites in which peers review it who are of equal education. Has it been, so, pu has it been, not that. Has it been published in a medical journal? It would be, yes. Okay, well, then we'll, we'll take a look at it. Okay, well, there's one. Uh, but aside from that, uh, universities and uh, 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 medical institutions, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. And an N, right. and an N more than five. All right, I'm happy to compile a list for you. Okay, we look forward um, to seeing it. Do you... Do you want an outline of each, or no. do you just want the raw links? No, we'll just take the raw links. We're we've got okay. we've got plenty of PhDs in uh, in community. We can we we're used to reading research papers. So All right. Well, in that case, um, I do thank you for being polite. You you have been so, and um, yeah, right. it was a pleasure talking to you. All right. Well, have a good one, man. And yeah, like I said, just drop it in the comments, and we'll we'll parse it.